Hi, welcome back to the Law and Crime Network. I'm Linda Kenny Bott, and defense attorney is using stick, like meaning like a comedy. It came from like the old time in the Catskills, where I have a cabin actually, where the comedies did their stand-up stick, as they call it. So, Mr. Lenahan is kind of indicating where he may be from or what he has studied in terms of historical comedy. But one thing that's not comic is my next guest that's coming in, Dr. Kelly Cruz, forensic pathologist, and you know that I love since I'm married to a forensic pathologist. I love forensic pathology. Okay, so. Dr. Dr. Cruz, you are board certified in forensic pathology and I believe anatomic pathology also? Yes, anatomic and clinical pathology. And clinical pathology, all three. So it's very important. We had a discussion earlier, and I want two questions to you. We had a discussion earlier today that this witness that is being crossed is not board certified. Tell us in plain English why it's important to be board certified. Board certification essentially shows that you have developed some sort of mastery in your field. And we take a written examination. Some examinations actually are oral as well. But it shows that we have a basic understanding in our field to the extent that we could be an expert witness at a trial like this. So given the fact that you you are, let's assume you were called to take the, uh, examine the bodies of Sade Dixon and the child who is unborn, who died here as a result of Mark Keith Lloyd, and he was found guilty. We also know that there's another case, the jury didn't hear about most of it, where he killed a policewoman. Is it important as a forensic pathologist to take the evidence from the body, for instance, bullets, and why? It's incredibly important, especially with firearm-related cases. We always try and collect any sort of evidence that we can. And projectiles are extremely important. And even fragments of projectiles are incredibly important. As a projectile is pushed through the barrel of a gun, you get what's called rifling. And they're very distinct characteristics that can connect that projectile to that gun. and can also connect that gun or that projectile to other crimes as well. So, Bernardo, you prosecute cases where you've taken evidence from where the medical examiners pulled evidence out. Dr. Cruz says in this case it would have been very important because it may lead to something relating to the police woman's case who was killed later, later on as she's trying to apprehend him. And he and his paranoia again uh, uh, killed her. Why is it important for you as a prosecutor and here in Brooklyn to have somebody who has the qualifications like Dr. Cruz? Well, it's important because, one, you want the jury to find this person credible, a person that you can believe because they have the proper training to be able to give you a scientific answer. So in regards to the projectile or the shell casing, it's really important because, one, they put it in a system to be able to match it to other prior cases or cases that can be coming up. But here, you were able to match that the projectile that came out of the body of this police officer matched the projectile or the same type of gun that was used in the death of Sade. So remember, you can compare projectile to projectile to determine if it came from one gun, shell casing to shell casing to determine whether it came from one gun, or the projectile to the gun or the shell casing to the gun. But you can't compare shell casing and projectile. So that's the wow. differences. Well, I have an all-star <laughs> panel here. So let's listen to the next clip of another cross-examination of Dr. Pritchard to see whether or not the defense makes any headway. Well, okay, so this is a cross-examination. Dr. Cruz, you have been cross-examined. And this is a cross-examination by uh, Mr. Lenahan, who in Florida, these attorneys are certified uh, to practice death penalty law. That's what they do day in and day out. They have the stable of experts. They know what they're doing. And in fact, they're usually planning for it in a case where they're uh, going to present a, a defense in the beginning. So, Dr. Cruz, you we saw in the Todd Molas case, as we labeled it, the corn rake murder here. And there was a question there on the corn rake murder about imprint evidence on the corn rake. But more importantly, there was also a question about how important it is for you the doctor, the forensic pathologist, to either go to the scene or see good mm -hmm. pictures of the scene. In this case, where Sade was killed, and the defense is saying it was self-defense because she had a gun, how important would it be for you to see the scene set up? It's incredibly important. I mean, we can't emphasize enough knowing the relationship of the decedent to their environment, 
many times we find little bits of evidence or findings at the scene that to us are incredibly important but may not be to another person. So if we're not able to go to a scene, we have to trust our investigators to be our eyes, be our ears, try and photograph as many things as possible so that when we get the decedent in our office, we can explain all of the findings that we see. So Dr. Cruz, let me just bring Bernarda in on this. Bernarda, now here, Dr. Cruz is talking about having objective evidence in terms of even photographs, which are incredibly important because a documents a scene for her to look at. Here, the defense psychologist gave, uh, including the one who testified, Dr. Sesta, earlier today, what's called an MMPI. We don't need to, to go into what it means. But it's, a, it's supposed to be an objective test to diagnose uh, mental disease or illnesses for the doctors. Why is something like an objective test now important? And why didn't Dr. Pritchard give any objective tests? Well, because Dr. Pritchard is not board certified or qualified, it seems, in any of the findings that he's providing to the court. He didn't exercise due diligence in any of the examinations that he did or documents that he reviewed. You need to see the whole picture. You can't just get a little debrief and hope to make a decision on it. And that's what he did. He didn't use any of the raw, raw data in order to make his determinations in this case. You need to see the entire big picture, whatever can be provided, whatever documents from discovery so you can review that whatever examinations already <clears throat> exist and he didn't do this in this case so funny you should mention the debrief because we do have the daily debrief here at five o'clock on the long crime network and that debrief is really good <laughs> so dr dr cruz from iowa where you now are and we did learn that you are uh, from new jersey and everybody here knows mm -hmm. i am from new jersey and i love anything connected to new jersey bruce springsteen uh <laughs> the windmill hot dogs even though i don't try not to eat meat uh, et cetera, et cetera. So when you go to a different jurisdiction and you are looking and reviewing, for instance, the autopsy uh, photographs here in this jurisdiction, you're called by the defense. What do you ask the defense to give you to be objective and why? So when, when in terms of what I want the defense to give right. me. Let's when assume I... you're hired for the defense. You're hired to call in. You're, Mr. Lenahan calls you and says, doctor, would you look to see if there was anything done here? What do you look for and why? What do you look at? Well, I really want to have every single bit of evidence that everyone else has. I want all documentation of the incident. I want if there's an autopsy report, what the autopsy report says to me. Medical records are incredibly important as well. I don't want to go up on the stand and find out that I'm missing a crucial piece of evidence or my evidence is somehow misleading in any way. So really, I just want the entire story without having someone lead me in a certain direction. I want to come up with my own opinion based on the facts. So let's see the last clip we're going to have right now of Terry Lenahan with his final question to Dr. Pritchard to see whether it is the exclamation point on the cross-examination. Let me ask Dr. Kelly Cruz, board certified forensic pathologist, anatomic clinical pathologist who is in Iowa, who we saw here on the Todd Mullis case, this. When you have a brain injury, can you see it on an x-ray, such as an organic brain injury from, let's say, hurling an infant across a room? Well, usually you would see more injuries if an infant was hurled across the room. What you can see on an x-ray are any sort of fractures or injuries to the skull. But if you need to look at the soft tissue or at the brain, you would need more enhanced imaging like an MRI or really for us looking at the brain and even sending the brain to a neuropathologist who can look under the microscope uh, might be more beneficial. And x-ray itself likely won't do the job. So Bernardo, you have a person, let's put you on the defense attorney side really quickly right now, who may have an organic brain injury that's causing all the issues in terms of how you react or the paranoia versus of just a men not just, but a mental health issue which is causing issues by the way of environment. How would you as a defense attorney go about explaining that maybe my client has an organic brain injury when you can't take the brain out of his body and have a neuropathologist look at Looking it? Looking at documentation, where's the documentation? Has this person seen a doctor in the past? Are there records, are there medical records from his youth up until the time of now to see that this has been documented? Because this can't be the first time now that we're finding about that he has a mm -hmm. mental health issue. So those are the answers from my great panel here in Iowa and in New York City, all two of us from New Jersey. But we are dissecting this case of Markeith Lloyd as to whether or not we would 
send him to death or not. Stay with us. We're going to take a quick break. Quick break, and we'll be right back. <laughs> 